Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to KW Malaysia's virtual training um, winning Mondays. Thank you for joining us this morning. And I realize today we have a little bit lesser people joining us on, on the Zoom compared to usual. I guess everybody is excited uh, about what's happening in our country today. So put in the chat box right now, what's your excite or what are you feeling about what's happening in the country this week? Like what are some of the thoughts that you have? Uh, share with us your thoughts, your, your, your feelings, your questions, your concerns. Um, what, what's going on in the country today? It's a good question. Let's start this, let's start this morning. Right, PM, we can see what well, new hope. What else? Come on, guys, let's put in the chat box. What are some of the things um, that you are expecting, that you are seeing, something's going on? Like, everyone is so excited about, about um, something's going on today. That's why I think they are probably... Um, probably washing their hands, washing their cars, cutting their hair. So they're all not here to this morning, right? So they're all busy doing that. So anyone, anyone got any thoughts about what's going on? Uncertain but excited. Yes, uncertain but excited. What are you guys excited about? A lot of excitement, a lot of um, positive excitement, I assume. But what's that? What what are some of the things that you you guys are excited about this morning? Anyone? Put it in the chat box. More drama, okay, existing no hope. What else, guys, what else? What, what are things that you are change? Great, capable leader, awesome. What else, status quo, right? What else, anyone? Right, Um. very interestingly, we are in what we call, there's this term called quark maya. If I heard, if you heard, if you, if you hear of this word before quark maya, meaning it's a time where everything is complete, completely very, uh, com uh, what do you call it, very complicated. Things are very complicated. It is not clear cut. It is not uh, uh, certain. There is a lot of complication. It is very unusual. And I think as a nation today, we are in a very unusual time, very unusual time. This is definitely part of our history books uh, that's going to go down to history that we are going through this unusual time. But the other aspect that I want to share with you guys, what I think is that, this is a sign of maturity in terms of no one person have absolute power anymore. And that's very important that there is a sign that um, you've got to really earn the respect and trust of everyone in order to stay in power, in order to become um, the leadership and the system of this country. So I think it is a form of um, progression, but yet it's hard to understand. I know some people say, why are you saying that we're progressing? But it's hard to understand this, but if you look at it in the next five or 10 years, I think when you look back, you all could agree, you might see that there is a sign of progression where things are changing. It's no longer one person in charge or one person have absolute power anymore. It's really a change where democracy uh, is coming to a, its evolution of people having um, the, the, the say. You and I today have a say. We are coming back to that point where you and I, what we say, what we think, what we want matters, and we are able to do that right now to a certain extent, not, to, not all extent, but to a certain extent. So if I look back, if I go ahead 10 years forward and I look back today, and I would think that we are in a progression stage and it's hard. This is what we call growing pains. As we are growing, we are progressing. We will go through certain pains and uncertainty, but that's how things change, right? It's through pain, it's through friction, it's through competition. It is through, if there's no competition, the best won't come, the best won't win. So maturity is, is, is about going through all this. It's about going through all this journey and challenges. And that's all hope that we might see a pleasant surprise today and this week. We might see things that we never expect to see happen this week. And I hope that will happen, right? But having said that today, our conversation today is to talk about equity, to talk about equity, equality, equity and equality. They're two different things, by the way. Equity is what we're going to focus on. We're going to drive that message. Equality is where it's different. And the difference is this. Equality means everybody start at the same place and at the same place. Equity means everybody come from different places, want to go different place, but get equal opportunity. Does that make sense? Equity focuses on the opportunities that's given. Equality focuses on things that is given to everyone equally, right? And I think equality in our current situation is no longer relevant anymore. Equality is not um, the best way to govern 
or to run certain things. But equity is probably what what I think um, uh, makes sense in the new world that we are in right now. And true enough, in Keller Williams, our the latest um, uh, what do you call it? Our Y four C two T S. Now our latest um, ten principle or the ten perspective of of culture is equity opportunities for all. And today we're going to talk a bit about equity. Now, I'll give you an example of what equity is before I go into the conversation. Equity is when every one of us come from different point starting points. We all come from different starting points. One, I might be at 25 years old. You might be at 40 years old. Um, someone might be at 60 years old. We all come from different starting points. But then we have the equal opportunity to make something out of this opportunity that's given to us. So an example today is um, growth share. Now, company has something called growth share. Everybody starts at different points. I'm a 10 years real estate agent. I'm a 25 years real estate agent. Here, I'm a junior. I'm just started this month. Everybody has the same opportunity to earn growth share, depending on, it doesn't matter where they start, right? So everybody, you don't have to qualify to start this. Everyone has a chance to earn growth shares, but everyone has a, everyone's uh, 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 outcome would be different. So when you have equity, doesn't give you equal growth or equal results. It, it is uh, equity for all or equity um, can sometimes bring you unequal results as well, right? So you need to understand that, that everyone has the same opportunities and we shouldn't allow where our starting point is to stop us from moving forward. So that's the conversation today. You must, you must kind of grasp the idea. And many people think that equity and equality is the same, they are, they are different. And I think uh, Gary Keller and the international um, uh, ALC in the US make a very, very good decision in using the word equity instead of equality. Because equity talks about everyone has an equal shot in the opportunity that they have, even though they come from different starting points. Right, some be agents, for example, all of us have access to command technology, all of us, right? But some of us use it differently, and therefore there's unequal results, right? Equal opportunity, unequal results, and that today our conversation is joined by um, three panelists, right? I'm going to have some interesting discussions. Some discussions are quite, I would say, um, challenging certain thoughts, right? Challenging certain. Uh, issues that I think is something that we need to talk about as a company or as a stakeholder in the industry. So today we have a three person. I wanted to have four actually, but the, the, the fourth person couldn't join us today. Um, but that's fine. So we have three person today. We have Lily Xiao from Market Center 2, um, Naki Muhammad Darus from Na Market Center 1, and we have Roshan Shapri from Market Center 3. Now, I believe most of us know them already until today, but I just want to just get you guys to go around and share a little bit about yourself, your business, and if you could tell us how is your production for the year 2021 is right now. Maybe I'll start with Lily first, since it's the only, the rose among the thorns here. So let's, let's go to Lily. Lily, why don't you just quickly introduce yourself a little bit and share, share with us how, how's your current production right now? Okay, um, morning everyone. Uh, so far, I have been in uh, this real estate sales for three years now, and um, uh, I would say that my performance um, is uh, rather average. I'm an average performer. And um, yeah, so uh, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, year 20, in the year 2021, um, what has happened in your business? I mean, have you transacted any, like what sort of transaction numbers have you done in terms of number of transactions? Okay, uh, so far for uh, two, uh, 2021 this year, um, I, um, overall, I actually received uh, 10 bookings, but not all negotiations turned out well. So uh, I only uh, have three successful sell transactions and uh, about six to seven rental deals and uh, two sell deals that are still pending for transfer to complete before transaction comes in. So, yeah. So, so about, about, five, about five sales, six, six, seven rentals for the year of 2021, right? Okay, sure. Thank you very much. Now let's go to Roslan. Roslan, how about you, man? Tell us about bit about yourself and how's your business so far in 2021. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Roslan from MC3. Before real estate, 
I was a flight crew with uh, Malaysia Airlines, uh, then uh, involved with developers like MK uh, Huayang with uh, sales for development. And also after that with a construction company supplying wastewater treatment plants uh, to developers as well. And uh, I've been a full-time uh, realtor, uh, Ren, uh, with, uh, since uh, 2010. And in 2015, uh, I joined uh, Ritfis Rikembangan and uh, it's been about six years now with Ritfil and it's, I'm currently now with Puchong uh, when Rikembangan uh, closed close, uh, operations. Lah. So uh, since uh, about that, lah, about 11, 10, 11 years uh, with uh, real estate now. How's your business in 2021? Tell us a little bit about that. 2021 has been a very challenging year. Uh, uh, to all of us especially, but for the, the anniversary year with Redfield, we start, uh, mine was in uh, September. So from September to December, uh, thank God uh, I managed to cap. And for year 2020, 20, 2021, uh, there's about, uh, now there's about four pending, uh, pending uh, case, lah, which is due to this uh, pandem uh, lockdown, uh, things has sort of like uh, halted now with even right. with the clients and probably uh, be closing soon lah. so it's been quite challenging but has been uh, a, a good year as well lah. right thank you for sharing that okay let's go last one is lucky lucky how about you can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how's your business in 2021 so far okay good morning everyone okay uh if anyone who don't know uh i was before this i was for in malaysia airlines as well as an auditor before I join, uh, before I join Rickfield, I think uh, this is going to be exactly my two years anniversary as a real estate agent full time. All right, so uh, I started since late twenty nineteen, so it's already exactly two years now. So talking about uh, what's happening uh, in my uh, transaction wise in twenty twenty one, it had been for for a calendar year perspective, it had been a good year for me, uh, to be honest. Uh, even though with the pandemic, there's always other things that you can do to try to make a sale uh, in this current condition. Uh, so far, I've closed seven transactions and a few rentals. Right. This year. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Great. So I want to start with you, Naki, since you um, for, since you, you are here here right now, talking about your year 2021 so far. The word equity, opportunities for all which is one of our belief system in our culture, what does that mean to you? How do you then relate to this word equity opportunities for all? How, how do you feel about this? And what do you think about this when you look, when you listen to this statement? Uh, the only thing that came into my mind is basically uh, fairness on how people are being treated and fairness uh, reflects what, how you've been treated fairly and how you are treating people fairly as well. Uh, that is the... the the thing that I can think about because like, as, as you mentioned earlier, people come from different walks of life and probably someone has 10 years experience, someone who has not no experience at all, they are being treated fairly in a sense of values are remain the same, technology, the leverage that we have in this company is the same. And at the same time, you apply that fairness to your consumers, to the customers as well. So it's like what you give, you get back. I think that's my uh, idea in terms of, you know, equity opportunities for all. It means like fairness for all. It's what you give and what you get back as well. Right. And, and you, you, you talk, I'm just going to follow through you because you, you brought a very good point. You said, it's an interesting point. I mean, you, you said that it's about how you treat each other, right? It's about how you are being treated in the company and how you treat your customers or your clients, right? Can you yeah. elaborate a little bit what you mean by that in terms of the customers part? Okay, when, when you have fairness instilled in you, okay, I can, as a human being, okay, not doing sales or anything, you want to be treated fairly as well, right? So if you want to be treated fairly, you need to portray uh, fairness as well to the people. I think the values that the company gives, give us more emphasis in terms of we need to do that because we are in the people business, treating people fairly is our number one priority. So that is most important. Some people may forget because we are doing sales, it's always at the back of our mind, we need to close the sale. 
okay whether we're doing it fairly or no because I, i'm not i'm not saying anyone i'm just uh, telling you that at the back of your mind there's always something hey, you want to hard push you want to close this but probably not doing it fairly but you know if like you look back and ponder i think it needs to be fair for all parties and life is if what we don't do this in life i think it, 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 it won't be nice I, I, that's my point of view i i i i live by this belief uh I think that is what I'm executing uh, to, uh, to my customers as well, yeah. Can you share a story in this area? Because I think it's a very important conversation to have. Can you share us if you have experience in this particular area of how have you been fair to a client or to a, a consumer in your journey? If you can, a short one. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's say, for example, in the market that I'm working on, for example, yeah, uh, because that's all there's always a lot of agents working, all right? So some someday a client may call, hey, asking about this property, this property, this property. And I know that particular property that they are interested in belongs to another client, uh, belong to another agent that I'm very, uh, I'm close with, all right? If I was a bad person, something like that, hey, I said, hey, yeah, go through me, lah. No, no problem. We go uh, try to make this sale together. But at the back of my, your mind, you know that you have that relationship with the other agent. So, hey, have you de- have you dealt with that particular agent before? So it won't be fair for me to take your client to take that client from my figure because at the end of the day, I'll be working closely with the agent. You know, customer will come and go definitely, but that agent will still remain there in the industry, and you need to work with them. You need to leverage with them in the future. So why waste that opportunity for that particular sale just to get you know a particular edge? I think that's the best example. I think in terms of fairness, I, uh, that's my best example that I can think of right now. Right, right. awesome. Thank you for sharing, man. That's, that's a very important element. Not only that we expect in our organization to be fair to us and to be fair to the organization, but at the same time, what's more important is are we fair to the people that's paying us, that, that's hiring us as agents? Are we fair to the consumer? Are we bringing equity to them in their opportunities to achieve their goals as, as well? Okay, cool. Uh, Rostan, how about you, Rostan? What's what's equity? What's opportunities for all mean mean to you, man? Yeah. Uh, as per our belief system, it says uh, opportunities to for all, and I I truly believe in that because uh, when you talk about equity in in uh, an organization, for example, where when when everyone is given the same uh, chance or the same uh, opportunity to to achieve whatever things that they want, so this is where it plays a very important uh, important role for for in in the beliefs of every one of us lah. and then uh, the other thing is that op- equity to me means like the you get the sense of belonging when when you are with an organization or with anyone so it also it trickles down to to the clients that you have when you share these kind of beliefs so they will have that kind of uh, uh, the sense of belonging to you indirectly when when they deal with you so it's it's more on on like uh creating that that link or relationship with uh, with uh, anyone whether it's your colleague whether it's your 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 superiors whether it's your clients you know the kind of uh, uh relationship where everybody has given a chance uh, given the same kind of opportunity or to have that sense of belonging uh, when we work with each other Right. Can you give an example that you have actually what you have spoken just now? Okay, is there any examples that you have experienced before that will be a good story just to quickly share with someone about this point of equity right now? Okay, from the uh, uh, company or from the uh, uh, career point of view, when you talk about equity, it means that it's opportunities. So when you talk about opportunities, not only uh, being uh, monetary or not only on that aspect of, of opportunity, meaning that you have the same opportunity with everyone to, to make the same man, amount of money that you want or the, to achieve the goals that you want. But it also gives the opportunity or the, the equity to, to your clients in terms of the type of properties or the type of uh, homes that is it's, uh, suitable for them, which you are involved in making sure that you are there to, to, to make them know that they have the, the uh, same amount of mm. opportunity for them to own a house as well. So it's a very important role for us realtors actually, you know, to, to uh, give knowledge and also to assist 
right. in order to get that equity out to, to the clients as well. Right. So they've got equal equity opportunities to understand what's available in the market. They've got the, the best out, outlook and the best um, choices that you deliver to them for them to decide rather than you, you decide for them. Exactly, right. because many many are not sure on you know like some of the especially the first time home buyers they are not sure whether they are eligible or they have have the opportunity to own a house or a home you know due to a lot of factors like especially during this pandemic, so where this is where it's very important for us to to understand that belief of equity in order for us to make them understand that they have the, the same. Uh, opportunity as well, just like any any other other uh, buyers in in the market. Okay, thank you for sharing, Rostan. Okay, Lily, how about you? How, how, what does equity or opportunities for all mean to you personally? Um, for me, equity uh, to me is like sharing what I have with others that benefits us all. Uh, for me, like in the case of um, let's talk about equity in our own company itself uh, practices. Um, to me, if I don't uh. For me, like in the case of giving listings away to our own colleagues, um, like uh, for me, if I don't have the specialty of that listing location or that industry, I would rather give listings to our own colleagues instead of leave it to clients to look for other agencies instead. Uh, to me, equity is like, even if I didn't close the deal of the listing, if my colleague closed the deal, it will still contribute to the company's production and it's important to keep the company strong, especially this MCO. And I, I still think eventually it's going to benefit us all. So uh, this is one part uh, that I see equity in our own uh, office's practice. Right. Can you share an example of um, what you just said just now? Which is, I think not. it's quite rare when people say, that, hey, I've got this thing to give away right now. I'm going to give away this. And I notice you do that a lot, Lily, in workplace. You've got this thing to give away. Have you ever had any positive outcome when you did that, did someone felt that it helped someone or the client felt help? Have you had any positive stories to share from that behavior or that, that initiative that you take in order for you to just reach out and pass that opportunity around for everyone? Um, from what I know, I, I, I have uh, one of the brand uh, uh, did uh, inform me that uh, she managed to close it from uh, it's not a listing, uh, it, it's more like a, a, a prospect, a, a referral, a client that I passed the contact to, to uh, this rent to, um, yeah, to serve the client. So uh, uh, even when I do that, I don't expect um, any returns from them. I don't expect to collect a portion from them because I, I, I feel that um, um, if, if let's say a rent is uh, trying her best uh, is, and probably is still rookie level, I, I don't actually uh, want to collect from them uh, because how I uh, came to this journey is not an easy way as well. So uh, I right. just, uh, yeah, I, I hope I answer your question. Right, right. So just helping out is to you is a form of not wasting the opportunity away, right? And then at least you pass on to someone else. By the same time, um, you don't want to get that opportunity to derail from your focus of what you want to do in your goals and your business. So it's a win-win for you. You, you. you get to help someone. You get to help the client. Actually, you help the agent in our own organization and you got to help yourself from being um, distracted from your main purpose, focus and goal. And that's good. That, that's very good. Uh, thank you for doing that. That's a very good example. And I hope people who are listening to this um, conversation today, you can pick up a few um tools or few thoughts that some of our agency are doing right now, maybe that will help you think through how can you bring equity spirit to the company. Lily, I'm going to stay there with you for a while about equity and all that. I, I, I don't know whether you have experienced anything on that, but is there any, because you are not a very experienced agent, you're not like 20 years in the business, you're like, this is your third year. And then sometimes you see some agents are about 10, 15 years and all that. How do you feel about yourself in terms of the opportunities? I know sometimes we might feel it feels a bit daunting and all that, but but how do you feel about is is does it mean that people who are 20 years, 15 years in the business are supposed to have more opportunities than you versus you are only three years in this business? How do you see and view that perspective? Do you think that there is some sort of um 
uh, 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 what do you call that? Have you ever felt that, oh, I don't think I can do better than those people who are 20 years in the business. I think I should just do certain things that I can only do. But what, what is your thoughts about comparing your journey versus the, those who are very experienced in, this, in that aspect? I don't know whether help you to answer that question. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, for me, I know my strengths and weaknesses. And um, um, initially, it, I get very stressed out because uh, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to be, uh, 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 how to say, I, I'm trying to uh, achieve results and uh, I'm trying to get to the top. But I just know that uh, my, my, where my level is. Uh, so uh, for me, um, I actually, um, it's more towards like, uh, I won't feel bad if I can't get to the top. Um, and uh, because throughout these past three years, I have personally witnessed my own um, growth, uh, how I matured from the first year until now. And um, I've actually witnessed my, myself reaching my personal best. And that itself is an achievement for me because I know that uh, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't have done uh, this and staying in the business itself is, is truly amazing to me already in this kind of shift market. Um, right. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. I wonder if I answered that. Yeah, how, how has culture in the organization helped you? Is, do you think culture in the organization has helped you to stay forward and stay in the game? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say that, um, actually, I, I, I really like the culture of the constant impartation of vision from the leaders in getting all ranks to be on the same boat in this shift market. And that actually gave me strength and vision to continue on in this business. And um, yeah, so. Um, right, the, awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. How about you, Rostan? Any, have you ever, like, Rostan, I'll ask you a different way, a different question, all right? Because you are more senior, you are more, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a little bit longer in the business and you're, yeah. So, have you ever in your journey, right, in, in business, right? Oh, uh, you know, in our business, sometimes we are we are we have to go through certain um not so not so pleasant experience where hey, uh sometimes it could be uh there's certain race-based uh, uh perspective that, that we have to go through, or there's certain experiences where you know. Oh, I, oh, I only deal with people from a certain race kind of journey and business. I, I want to talk a little bit about that today because I think that's very important. Um, and this and, and August and September, we are celebrating you know, this Malaysia Day uh, uh, journey. But I wanted to ask you, Rostan, and I know you sometimes can be quite vocal about this, which is good. So I thought if you could explain, <laughs> share with us a little bit, you know, how do you feel about that and how do you how do you go forward in this? Like, and it's, real, it's a real problem, right? I mean, sometimes there are certain um, people, perspective, uh, certain clients, agents, or whatever it is out there, people that have a different lens when it comes to, um, you know, certain biasness, right? Especially when it comes to race. What, what do you, what, what have you experienced? And what do you think about that, Rosla? Yeah. One, one of the reasons why I am with Redfield is simply because of that. You know, the diversity of race and diversity of the type of different different kind of people in in one organization where we can learn and uh, you know benefit from each other for experience in terms of race based is something like uh, it it's a fact where sometimes most of us would want, would not want to address that and that is becoming a a, a, a cancer or a problem to many of us uh, you know in terms of addressing the the issue at hand rather than you know uh, facing it and trying to find solutions for that Early my during my early days of uh, real estate, I was with a uh, hundred uh, percent uh, Malay based uh, company agency. You know, so not to say that uh, it's a, a different. It's the same thing. You know, we're still doing real estate those kind of things. But the focus or the target or the goal of achieving is a bit is totally different. You know, when you you put a, a race into what you do in real estate you are basically narrowing down only to a certain portion or certain uh, 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 part of the market where you don't explore or this kind of thing. So during the first years of my uh, experience, and what I did was like, uh, I go to high-end market, for example, like Monkiara, Damansara Heights, 
where during that time in 2010, 2011, I can basically count with my fingers number of uh, Malay uh, agents uh, covering those, those kind of areas, you know. And they are even, I get one experience where when I cover uh, Mon Kiara, there's even one uh, uh, lady, uh, a Chinese lady who called me and, and just told me off like, like what, what are you doing in Mon Kiara? You know, this is our market. This is uh, those kind of things. So that is something like to me, uh, it, it, it's already there. It's been, it's been there. The issue has been there for, for many, many years. And I, I, to me, I don't care because real estate is a big market. And the type of buyers, the type of people uh, uh, who wants to own homes is basically from any race, uh, all races, not only from one, one race. So, but as you can see, the race in, in Malaysia now, in terms of uh, real estate, has been segregated into type of properties that, that is being offered to them. For example, the majority of the Malay uh, Malay buyers, what I see, you know, this is my opinion, what I see is probably those below 500,000 uh, market. And for the Chinese also, they also have uh, this uh, category as well. But in terms of the high-end uh, market, they are more on that as compared to the Malays uh, uh, and also even the, the Indians. As well. So this is where uh, the, the what John said, the equality of chances or the equity of chances for everyone to own homes is, is very important. And the reason, one of the main reason why I am still with uh, Redfield KW Malaysia, this is the reason why. Because I work with everyone, whether you're a Malay, a Chinese, Kadazan, Indian, whatever, uh, Iban, kan? to me, it's the same. This is where the belief of uh, opportunity for all uh, uh, stays true. Lah, you know. So before I go and talk about and uh, unrelated item. I hope that answers your question, John. Right. So I want to follow up. I want to ask you a follow-up question from there because you have experienced this before. How how do you overcome those challenges? Because there are certain things that we cannot control outside of this company, outside of the realm. Right. There are other people outside that you and I cannot control. Yeah. What are some of the what What are some of your advice to the people in this room here today? How if you go through this journey, if you have Maybe you have been having some sort of unpleasant experience in this area. What is an, an advice for you, uh, for, from you, Roslan, to the people out there who, when you have experienced that yourself? The first thing that you do when you, you, when you, you experience this kind of thing is that you have to, to, to make sure that you have a clear mindset on what you want to do in terms of what you want to achieve, uh, whether for yourself or even for your clients. You know, uh, like for example, now I've got lots of uh, Chinese clients, Indian clients, you know, uh, uh, along the way within this, this uh, period of time, and they are still with me until now. The reason, uh, even there's, there's one, one of the one client in particular who told me that I've never worked with a Malay uh, uh, rent before, but I, I like to work with you. The reason what she told me is that not because of your race, but the way you handle things uh, uh, professionally as, a, in, as a, a realtor and not because of who you are. So that is the reason why uh, we are still with you. you know, we, we, I've been helping her with uh, relocation, helping her with uh, selling and uh, pro uh, uh, properties, getting new properties for her. And from there, she, uh, from word of mouth, she started recommending a lot of her, her friends to me. And I'm proud to say that my client database now consists of all races, not only majority of Malays, not only majority of Chinese, you know, and even when, when I work with other rents as well, I work with all. I don't go for, you know, like, like only certain kind of, uh, certain race. Uh, so the most important thing for this is that when you have to set a clear mindset uh, uh, on your own mind, like what you want. If you call yourself a Malaysian, if you call yourself a, a, a citizen of the country, you, you serve everyone you serve uh, the uh, malaysians that we have uh, in uh, in the country because we understand that in terms of equality of the race in malaysia there's a lot of issues but if you hype on issues you always find issues but if you hype if you focus on the opportunities or, or focus on on what we can do together as uh, multiple races in the country we are going to achieve more and we're going to have a very great country that's what we had before the tolerance that we have uh, with each other in order for us to succeed. 
So forget, don't look at negative things. Don't look for, don't look for faults. If you look for faults, you'll find faults. You know, things like that. Right. Right. I like that. I like that perspective. It's how you focus on that the opportunities, how you focus on what is what you focus on expense, right? Because if you focus on the challenge, the problems, the issues, the fault that we have, then you always find the fault because it's not perfect. When you have two or three or four people coming together and trying to work it out, it's always going to be challenges because we, again, we all came from different backgrounds, different yeah. beliefs, different ideologies, different starting points. So we cannot expect everyone to be equal in that sense. But it's how we look beyond that and say, hey, can we find a way to make this work? Can we find, find a way to do grounds. something? Yeah, find, yeah, find, the can common we find some common grounds. You're right. Yeah, all... We need some common grounds, right? And, and, and really, as a company, we believe in finding common grounds. And the common ground is how many of you want to earn a lot of money to support your family? That's it. Exactly. Exactly. It's very simple. So keep, keep focusing on those things. And it will show up in your conversation with your clients. Because I like what Rosan said. It's like the values and the standards that you bring to the table for the clients are the one that makes sense, are the one that is more important than anything else. So thank you for sharing that, Roslan. Right. Lucky, how about you? I think we lost um, uh, uh, Lily for a bit uh, due to internet, I guess. But um, I'm not sure support. Please stay, keep, keep, in, keep, uh, keep in check if she comes back and right? put her back on the main screen, please. Right, how about you, Naki, from your side? Based on what I just asked Roslan in terms of that conversation, that journey, have you have any experience that way and how do you feel about yourself? It could not be a race thing. It could be, uh, I'm only a rookie in this, in this market. I have many more senior people. It could be many, many different kinds of biasness that you might feel, that you might experience in life, in your journey of real estate. But what would that be and, and what, 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 do you, what have you experienced before? Okay, when I started to join real estate, I know where which is the area that I'm going to focus on. So you study the market, you you tend to find out that it's a very mature environment that you're working on. There's a lot of super senior agents, and there's a uh, majority is definitely uh, Chinese dominated. Definitely, okay. So the thing that had very instilled in me, like since the beginning, is that negativity. Oh man, how can I compete with these guys? These guys are super seniors. How am I, I'm a new fish in the, I don't know, I'm the new fish in the sea. What am I supposed to do? Those kind of negativity is always at the back of my mind. But whatever it is, uh, I tune my mindset. I change my mindset. At the end of the day, I know I can outshine or even be better compared to those agents it, it really all depends on the values that you portray and number one is how you carry yourself i think that's the most important thing i'm not saying i'm a super junior in a sense of maturity level okay because i have worked, work experience before working professionally even though not in the real estate market but i do carry some maturity instilled in me so i know sometimes when i dealt with other agents from outside the company i know it I mean, I'm better than this. I mean, I mean, in, in, in the sense of how I carry myself and how ethical I, I think I am, uh, I know values can win clients just like that. You bring good values, even though you're still new, you bring good values, you bring knowledge uh, also and data, specific accurate data that you know that particular market, even though you are one year old and 10 year old in the business, it does make a difference. Yeah just make yourself as valuable as you can provide them value and you will see the, the fruits uh, being ripped from there yeah right but yeah in terms of encountering all this kind of uh, race-based uh, uh, conflicts uh, honestly I did not receive any uh, because I, I do believe how I present and carry myself uh, with honesty and integrity uh, really helped me, uh, you know, endure um, this kind of market between all races, Malay, Chinese, Indian, and all races. Yeah, I think they are okay with me. I'm okay with them. Right, right. It's it's how we 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 think about ourselves first, right? It's how we see ourselves first. Because I I like what Naki just said. If you all catch it, it's not what I caught. It's I know my value. I know I can add value. I know I. I can do better than some people. I know I can have what it takes to compete in the market. Now, I may not win the market, but I can compete and I know my value. Now, it takes us to have value in order to give value, right? So, Naki, you talk a lot about giving value, right? How, how do you prepare yourself 
your mindset or your activities or the day that you the things that you do in order for you to have the ability to give value back first to the client so that they see the lens that this guy is a valuable um, opportunity a valuable real estate uh, professional that can serve me so how, how do you do that okay looking back at uh, kw values one of the values is creativity uh, which i think plays an important pivotal role for me uh, working in a very mature market I will, at the back of my mind, uh, starting from the beginning, I should, I always ask myself, how am I supposed to approach this market? Okay, am I going status quo, property portal all the way, or I'm getting leads from other ways? Being creative, being something that uh, other people is not doing or not many are doing, and following and leveraging is one of the, uh, I think, values of KW as well, leveraging on what others are doing, not only in Malaysia, you go across the board, you see what the people in the States, people in Europe is doing. Compare that, because like all the other countries have iProperty, for example, property portal that they always put things in. So you can always try, try to do something creative without you know, uh, using the status quo uh, of other many agents are doing. So that is the best, uh, I think being creative, uh, creating my own uh, site, uh, my website, my social media had bring a lot of uh, positive feedback and positive leads in the future. So that result speak for itself. And I know uh, I'm doing something a, a little bit different compared to others. And I know it's uh, a bit eye-catching for other agents because I know a lot of other agents from other companies are following me now. So that shows that, uh, okay, uh, this, this is something, uh, this is something. So what am I going to do after this? What am I going to do after this, after like so many? If like once people follow you, there's a possibility that everything will be mainstream again. So how can you improve yourself to be better in the future? I think uh, that's the thing that uh, keep me going on a daily basis. Right. So if I, if I put one word to, to just what you say is constant reinvention. Uh, yeah, it is, it's hard. <laughs> Right, right. And Gary Keller has a t-shirt. He, he has a t-shirt. He says he is written here in our training. He always tells us that if you are not reinventing your business, someone else is. Right. So and, and that's how you stay ahead of the game. Um, because everyone has an opportunity to do what Naki is doing. Do you agree, Naki? Everyone has the same opportunity to do what you are doing. Whether they Definitely. know how to do it is a separate issue, right? But they Definitely. can do what you can do, right? Even better, I think. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, Lily, you're back already. I'm going to ask you the next question here. Um, and it's a little bit about culture and also about equity, but more of culture and the talk, the thought about being inclusive, being belonging or part of communities, right? I think one of the, the big thing about our organization is we focus a lot about communities, being part of communities. So Lily, are you part of any communities within our real estate family? Uh, if you have, how has that changed your business? Right. So <laughs> she's still part of this community. It's just that her internet is, is, is getting Are you back there? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, you're part of the community. Don't worry. It's just the internet only. Uh, you're, you're, part, you're still part of your <clears throat> Right. Can you share with us a bit of, uh, about being part of communities in our organization or in the real estate industry that has helped you in your business right now? Can you share a bit about being part of the real estate community or being part of a community in our organization? How has that helped you in your business? Okay, uh, in case my line uh, yeah, goes haywire and I talk something weird, <laughs> please let me know. <laughs> so, um, well, I'm actually a solo agent and I work independently. Uh, to be honest, um, People come and go. Uh, my batch and my friends, they had already left the industry or left retail, so I don't rely too much on people. However, I, I don't feel shy to ask for help from market centers, senior rents, or uh, my coach. Um, but I do have a coach who uh, helped me a lot, uh, and, and I think this is also part of community. Um, yeah, the, my, my coach uh, has helped me a lot in expanding my perspectives and helping me to break through to have some results in this shift market. And having a, a coach to me, I've, I, felt, if I felt like having a Taiko, a big brother covering my back, uh, especially in moments that I did not know what to do. So uh, yeah. Right. 
and, and you talk about you are not afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Right. Can you share with us on some advice for people in this audience here who might not be, who might not have the courage to ask for help? Can you share how do you start asking for help? What are some of your advice to us who may not have this initiative or may not be called to, who may not have that, um, that, that, no, not so comfortable asking for help. No, how would you advise us? Okay. Uh, for me, uh, reaching out to others for help, it can be in a lot of ways. What I mean is, uh, whether it's knowledge or whether uh, you you experience some uh, hiccups in your uh, negotiation in your deal that you need advice. Uh, these are a sort of help that I reach out to uh, mentors, senior brands, or uh, market centers in order to help me improve my business. It's, like, it's, it's about how much you want to receive then how much you want to ask. Uh, does it make sense? Yeah. Right. How, how, I, for me, how much knowledge I want to receive that uh, 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 that, that will give me uh, how, what is the margin, uh, how much I want to uh, reach out for help because uh, eventually yeah, eventually it will. Uh, you're the one who, who is gaining, uh. So, uh, right. it's it's not losing to reach out for help. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Rostan, I'll come back to you. Uh. I'm gonna change the, the gears now. We are, we are, I don't talk so much about equity, equity. Uh, really we have covered that quite well. But I want to talk about generally about culture because I think culture is very important. The way we treat each other, the way we behave each other. What are some of the cultures in our business, in our company that you embrace and you think that it is important for you to have? What is that culture um, values that has helped you go through this journey in your real estate business so far? Uh, for Ripfield, um, KW Malaysia, the culture of learning, that is where it, it, it affects me uh, the most in my journey in real estate now, as opposed to, to what I had before. You know, uh, how, how do I get to that is that, you know, it's not only by, by the term of learning where you read a book, you, you, you know, you attend classes, you uh, attend trainings or the kind of thing. But in terms of learning on knowing who you are in this real, real, uh, real estate industry and who you are uh, learning on what you actually can do uh, to others in this real estate industry. Learning from the book, learning from the trainings that we have under KW, which is ongoing on a daily basis, which is tremendously uh, excellent. But it, you must derive what are these for in terms of uh, learning on how to put yourself in the in the market uh, in in the in the industry. So, the culture of uh, Redfield now is instilling that to probably uh, to me and also to probably a lot of people now you know those who never read books before for example myself you know i don't read books except for you know like harry potter last time so i start to to open up books you know when i see that people are uh, uh, achieving lots of of things and from the stories from the videos i see from even those in the us you know it it helps them so like, like what you talk about, about the culture, you know, about the community kind of thing, you know, because Redfield KW Malaysia is already a community by itself, you know, and it's in that it comes family. So that is the, that, the other culture of what we have now, you know, the, the togetherness or, or the, the family kind uh, orient, uh, orientation, uh, oriented kind of, of link that we have with between each other, you know. I can help, I can talk to anyone in the in the industry uh, in our uh, organization they can talk they can call me anytime even though we have not met before you know we, and we can share on things that you don't understand things that i don't understand you know so those are the kind of culture that we have now which is i'm thankful for when when i know that i don't uh, see that in many of other other uh, other agencies because most of other agencies the only focus that they see is the monetary part uh, the, the gain that they have, how many awards that you can give, where you can get, you know, what are type of recognition that you, you can get. But here in Rickfield, you, 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 we focus on, on the culture first. And by focusing on the culture, by instilling that culture with every, every, uh, each one of us, then we gain that monetary part indirectly. So right. that's what I see uh, in a culture in, in, in Rickfield. Right. right. Thank you for sharing. And 
it's all about teaching us to be better human beings first. Exactly. Right. And, and when we talk a little bit about the, you know, in the early conversation with Rostan, we talk a bit about, oh, how, how, how do we not focus so much the lens of the racial inequality, the racial issues? That's important to talk about because that tells us how we want to behave as a good human being. So just want to bring that out. It's all about being better human beings, being better people first, so that you can be better real estate people as well. Because if you are not a better person, it's hard to be a better real estate person. Just, just it is in you are all as one being, you're all integrated as one. It, the, the real estate part is not separated from us, it's just part of us, right? So I just want to bring that out for us to understand. All this is meant to help us to be better people, which means we may make mistakes sometimes, but it is when we learn from the mistakes, we learn how to be better at all times, right? So that's important. Naki, how about you? What are, what are the other aspects of culture, Naki, that you like and you've seen and has helped a few uh, in your business so far? I think from a company point of view, the most in thing that is very pivotal to me that had changed in terms of how I do business is the mindset twitching that the company is uh, steering you on. So I think mindset is really important, especially when you are, you know, you when you are embracing this uh, shift market, it's really important. So with all the technologies, all the leverage that you can have, but if you have the wrong mindset, uh, is, it will be really difficult and very hard for you to achieve the goals uh, that you are probably going to try to achieve. So I think KW had made it quite clear in terms of what your mindset should be, what is the strategy that you need to implement and execute, I think, which is uh, really important. I think learning base is number two as well. I think with all the trainings and all the guidelines, uh, guidance from, you know, uh, you know senior ranks, uh, experts and overseas uh, agents as well have really helped you open up into you know uh, growing your mentality in terms of hey, what can be done things that you can change things that you can improve in your business that you can leverage on which is really important i think for me I, but i think lastly lastly uh, vision uh, is really important especially this time so when we have a captain of a ship who can steer us correctly in the correct direction uh, to embrace the market moving forward, I think that would be the ship that I'll be in. Exactly. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really, really uh, pivotal in terms of the choices that you made, uh, especially this time around when we have so many unstability. But you know, if like their vision is, you believe that that is the vision that you want to be in, I think you are probably on board the correct ship, <laughs> my right. point of view. Right. So, so having clarity of vision, having alignment, that clarity of vision is very important because without vision, people perish. They will just, yeah. like, they will just move away and they will perish, right? So that's very important. That's a great question here on the chat box. And I want to open this up for all three of you to answer if you all want to answer or whoever wants to answer. This is a great question. How can a good culture translate to a sustainable business or a sustainable income for rent? I think it's a very, thank you for asking w, L, LWY. Thank you for asking that question. I think it's a very good question. How can a good culture translate to a sustainable income or a sustainable income for rent? So basically, I think it's how can this good culture brings you good income or good opportunity for sustainable sustainable income and business, right? So great. Um, anyone wants to answer this question? Who wants to answer this question first? I think it's a very good question. Go ahead, don't be shy. Equal opportunity for all now. Answer the question. Who wants to go? Hi, uh, Joanne. Uh, <laughs> John said a very good question there. You know, how can a good culture translate to sustainable business? Because I totally understand. Just by having culture alone, you know, but uh, it's not gonna 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 change anything. You know, but you have to understand culture. There's there's a, a few different definition of culture when you talk about cult, the the word culture itself. To me, what how can it change uh, us as, as a realtor is that when you have a good culture in an organization, you tend to 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 be to have that kind of sense of to have that sense of belonging in that particular uh, company. So when you have that sense of belonging in that company, you tend to be happier in whatever things that you do. And when you are happy with what you do, you tend to follow whatever goals that you, you want to achieve. And when you follow goals that you want to achieve, you have a sustainable, sustainable income uh, from that. So all these are inter, interrelated, even though uh, not directly, but
but it's all interrelated. So it all begins with, with your mindset and the culture that you have in the company. Because I have been with uh, in a place where I have the right mindset, but I don't have the culture, the right culture in the company. And it doesn't work. It conflicts with everything. You know, for example, like when, when, when John said, when the culture of uh, having race-based kind of, of organization, you have the right mindset, but the culture is totally race-based. So you, it, it's not going to work because what I felt is that no matter how, how we, we try or no, no matter what we want, we cannot change others to, to believe what you believe, you know, and never, never show what you believe into others' throat. So you have to start from yourself. So good culture, like what uh, here Wong Wai Seng said, good culture is the foundation of success, if you like it or not. But that is part of uh, how you get to be in an organization or in a community of a good culture that gives you uh, indirectly the, the, the other platforms that are interrelated to that, uh, how to be uh, successful. Uh, anyone, not only a real estate, but a realtor, but anyone, uh, any, any platform or any business that you have. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else, Naki or Lily, you want to answer that question? <laughs> I, I can add a little bit. Uh, first of all, uh, vote, vote line for PM. Later, we all send him to the palace. I'll, I'll get a car to bring it. Then uh, you'll try it. We'll try it. I'll okay. be PM. I'll be PM. Okay. Uh, I think for me, there is a fine line between culture and values. All right. So some people get it confused all right so when you have values remain intact and the values that is practiced by the agency for example and where you have culture uh, which instill uh, the agents to work together um, and with a vision that leads you towards uh, the challenging moment that we are facing now uh, it will get it will be sustainable because we need to compare with other agents probably if like the culture is there, uh, probably, but probably the vision is not there. Okay, they are not knowing what they are doing now. So especially in this uh, current tough situation that we are facing. So if you have a captain of the boat who does not know what to do, I think you won't you won't be sustainable. So I think all plays a part uh, in unison in order for this to work. You, you need to have your values, your culture, and uh, a true uh, a true leader that can uh, steer you. Uh, embrace you towards the better future. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And, 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 and the captain yeah. for it, Phil, is I think everybody knows who the captain for this ship. Lah. Can, yes, and yes. We will, can. Round of applause for the captain uh, now. <laughs> yeah, we'll we talk about that later. There will be another session just about the, the captain. Okay. So, 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 Lily, what about you? Anything to add? Anything to add on this? Hey, uh, to answer Joel's question, uh, yes, I do believe uh, culture does play a um, uh, a role in driving sustainable business uh, by embracing culture of integrity. Um, this, um, I mean, integrity in what we do, what we talk in our work. Um, to be honest, uh, there are a lot of unethical agents who are insincere in handling buyers' earnest deposit, or even manipulating important info, or even providing fake tenant profile in order to seal the deal quick. So in our line, especially that. I'm a solo agent, uh, solo agents out there, we, we don't actually account to anyone on our daily conducts and how we talk to clients, how we handle all booking fees collected. There's no one watching us. And that gave us a lot of room to do a lot of things that may not be right. So, but I, I know one thing that uh, if we have this, uh, uphold this integrity in, in what we do, uh, like for me, I, I know that even though there's no one watching, I am still accountable to a God who is watching us in our speech, in our daily conduct. So uh, by, uphold, by upholding this uh, culture of integrity, uh, starting from the levels of leaders and even to, the, to all the ranks, I believe people will see us differently uh, than, and trustworthy uh, that will build your good name over time. And that actually builds sustainable business because uh, people will spread by word of mouth. Uh, oh, this is the agent who... Well, you know, you don't. You can trust her. You can trust him. You get referrals, and and that over time, you you actually building your good name, and people do remember you for for you uh, being so different, trustable. Yeah, and yeah, people people uh people will actually uh, still refer back to you. Get referral business. Yeah. Right. I hope right. that answers. Thank, 
Yeah, that's a great question. And 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 trust is a, a, a very, very expensive thing. Trust is very, very costly. It takes a lot of time to build. It takes a lot of effort, um, but it can go very fast. It can go away very fast if once someone distrusts you. So that's, that's a very good point. Thank you for sharing that. I, I want to add a little bit about culture as well. You know, I, I always equate culture as good feeling, integrity, honesty. I always thought that how can we all have good, good family relationship? That's, that's the kind of understanding I have with culture. There was the level of understanding I have with culture until I joined Keller Williams. Uh, when I was exposed to a lot of high level leadership conversation, when I exposed to Gary Keller himself every month, and I encourage everyone to go to Mega Camp if you have a chance. It's only, I don't know, six or seven, nine US dollars to go. You will, you will be exposed to a different culture. And there's this culture of always striving to be excellent. This culture always wanting to do, want to be the best version of ourselves. That is something that I never experienced. I never think about it as culture, but that itself is culture. How can we hold each other accountable? How can we push ourselves to do a limit, a limitless belief? That's a good culture. That's a culture about how can we see things differently? How can we um, focus on excellence? How can we, you know, do things that is difficult, but yet we can achieve it? So that's the kind of cultural aspect that I never thought was part of culture that I think for a very long time, personally, for me was missing, right? Um, and now being part of the culture every month, having that meetings with them, talking to them, opening, um, seeing examples of where that company is progressing, uh, it's a culture of excellence. So it's excellence itself is another form of culture. You, that, that's something that I think we need to understand. Sometimes that particular part of, part of culture, we don't talk enough of it. We talk a lot about how we feel, but we don't talk about what we want to become because that's another culture. So I hope that answered that question. Uh, in a culture of wanting to be excellent, wanting to be a better worship every day, want to progress, right? That's, that's good culture. Okay, last question for everyone before we close today. Before we send, uh, you know, some of us to Mimi Rostar and go to the Agong's Palace or whatever before we go there, right? So, 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 let's ask this question: What motivates you? And I'm going to start with Lily first. What motivates you to embed some of these values in your life? Because it sounds, and what Lucky says is very clear. It's about values and culture as a fine line, right? So, what what helps you to stay the course of? valuing or, or having those values embedded in your journey in your life and your business okay Lily you there uh, yeah uh you can hear me right yeah go, okay. ahead, go ahead go ahead so um uh what motivates me i think i think um what motivates me is uh because i have tasted grace and kindness um, that I was given a second chance to, to live life in an uh, improved way, especially when, when I first started to join uh, real estate sales. Uh, it is because I tasted it that uh, I really appreciate how I was given the opportunity that I want to give back um, the opportunity uh, for people who, who deserve it, like uh, how I went through the journey as well. So yeah, I guess that actually motivates me. Awesome. How about you, Naki? What, what are some of your motivations to help you keep yourself in this value system that you have set? And it's kind of aligned to our culture. What, what, what has helped you motivate you to be in this value system that you have set? Okay, no, number one thing, some of, some of the values are quite a no-brainer that everyone needs to instill, like honesty, trust. Those are really important values as a human being, as an agent, as a whatever you are in life. Okay, those are no-brainers. But with all the values here that we, we have already addressed, uh, it, it, it is a backbone or a benchmark for you uh, for all the things that you're going to do in the future. So you rest based on this uh, as a guideline for you. Okay, whether you are meeting all this, it, it's just to show you uh, who you are as a person. So, and it really does help you uh, uh, improve uh, things that you need to improve on. So leverage things that you need to leverage on. I think it is it's basically like a guideline for you to always look back whether, hey, am, I, am I like this? Am I like that? Uh, should I do this? Should I do this more? Those kind of things. It's always like a guideline for you that always help you. So that's always something that you can refer back to. 
uh, to be a, I think individually to be a better person, uh, not only as an agent, to be a better person, better human, better father. Uh, uh, yeah. So all these values really does uh, give you a, a, a reason to ponder uh, and, you know, uh, moving forward, be a better vision of yourself. Right. Awesome. Russell, how about you? Yeah. Uh, you know, John, when, when you've lived, like as for me, to a certain age, almost a half a century uh, of age, you know? Uh, oh, you, look 20, you look 27, bro. I take that as a compliment, Aki. Thank you. Uh, we talk about honesty, right? Honesty first, honesty. So... <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, uh, E-class. E-class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, like right. Rosa, go ahead. Like I said, you know, when you talk about values, uh, to me now, it's more on, on the combination of all the values that you learn or you gain throughout your life in order for you to leave a legacy for the ones, uh, for the young ones, for the, your generation, especially for your kids, for, for to, to have a legacy for them. So because... So that's how it motivated me because if I don't have these kind of values that I hold on to, I will not have a legacy to, to leave to my kids and they will not look up to me as a father, as a dad on someone who have high values on, on, uh, on uh, running uh, his life uh, in this. So indirectly by doing that, you are also you know, uh, spilling that, that kind of value that you have towards those around you uh, currently, whether it's your colleague, whether it's your, your clients, or even those, those uh, uh, who, who around you. Lah. So that is what motivated me most because, you know, like the first and foremost is God, you know, like every one of us, even the, the, the values, uh, our beliefs here is with God and then comes family. So this is, how we, we put ourselves or we position ourselves in this world in order to have those kind of values for us for, to, to, to move forward, success for, for our life, for careers, and also for the next generation to come. Because you get to choose what you want, the path that you want to follow and how much you want to believe. It's like entirely up to you, but you know, uh, with the values as an anchor for you to, to, to avoid you from going astray, from, from doing things that are not supposed to, to be done. Uh, so that's what motivated me most. Lah. And of course, the people in Rickfield, John, you know, Naki, I always say that I'm 30, look, 30 something like that. 27, 27. 27. 27, okay, okay, okay. Great. Legacy is worth living behind. Having a life worth living legacy of worth living behind. That's important. That's what drives Roslan. Great. Before we end the session, I have some announcements. I will give some last thoughts to everyone to share. But before we get the last thoughts, can I have a quick announcement, please? Um, mutual support. Thank you. Right. Um, cool. So our training keeps going. Um, this week is a little bit different because we have two separate sessions that's only internal. Uh, next slide, please. Tonight, we're going to have uh, a special session on how to win in the commercial market. So Jonathan Lowe, uh, and, and Jonathan Lowe is not Jonathan Lee. Jonathan Lowe is Jonathan Lowe. Jonathan Lee is Jonathan Lee. There are, there are three Jonathans in the company. So this is the, 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 the other one. You always see Jonathan quite now, Jonathan Lowe. Um, he has been contributing quite a lot of articles to certain um, uh, publication online recently. And I think he has got quite good insights about certain success he has in commercial market right now. So I think he's going to share this with internal agents only tonight. So if you if you are if you are uh, available tonight, which I think most of us are because we're at home, um, do sign up for this session. Just come on and join us. Uh, Jonathan will be sharing a little bit about how to win in the commercial market. Next slide, please. And then um, I really want everyone to come to look at this. Um, a lot of us have has been sending messages to ask us about, hey, how is this? Uh, interesting insurance package that we have. Now, I remember Roslan asked me this many, many years ago about, about having something like this, right? I remember Roslan asked me, I think when there was a, some of our colleague, past colleague passed away, I think a few years ago, due to food sale, I don't know, and Roslan told me, hey, why don't you get something for the agents? And I, and I remember responding, say, we are looking and looking, we finally find one, found one. And I think it's ex exceptionally important during COVID-19 as well that we all have some sort of medical coverage in our insurance and we partner with Etika. So Etika is going to drive uh, a, a, a session just to kind of coach and teach us about why insurance coverage is important and where the value creation that we have created with them to bring you the best value at the lowest cost to cover you and your family in this season, right? So this is something that is only for 
refill or KW Malaysia agents uh, because that offer is only given to them. So do do, do come for this session. Um, I think it's on Wednesday at 2 to 3 p.m. Um, I hope you will be able to think about covering um, uh, uh, your, your family and yourself in terms of medical, right? That's very important this season. Next slide, please. Right, um, just a quick announcement. Next week, for the whole of next week, the regional team and some of the market center leaderships will be uh, in mega camp. So because of the time zone, right, we'll be sleeping at four o'clock in the morning and waking up at uh, maybe 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. So, so it's going to be a bit of a, 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 a very uh, different schedule. We all have a bit of jet lag that, 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 that week. So do expect that we'll be responding in a more delay response. Maybe we'll be delaying a half a day to a day in terms of response because when you call, when you text me at eight o'clock in the morning, I might be sleeping because I slept at four o'clock, right? So we are going to start, uh, we'll be in mega camp uh, for the whole week. Um, the market center support will still be available to respond to you as usual, but um, some of the regional team or your maybe your own market center leadership uh, will be with us in mega camp together. So I encourage everyone to join mega camp, right? That, that's because then, then we all, will respond to each other at the right time because we are all in mega camp together. So that's that's the goal. Next slide, please. Right, um, spotlight. So last week, we have about 20, 21 out of 46 spotlights. This is a, uh, 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 some sort of awareness that we want to bring to all agents that have your listing spotlights right now because spotlight um, will bring your listing to about 80,000 subscribers on the e pool out that HPROC has on a weekly basis. Um, so I encourage, we encourage everyone uh, but I think by Monday uh, to, to kind of spotlight your listing so that you can get um, more eyeballs on your listing on that particular uh, newsletter. Next slide, please. I want to remind everyone that we still have a competition going. Um, those who featured most credits will win, featured most listings in HPROC will stand a chance to win 500 credits, right? Next slide, please. Right. Um, yeah, again, go, go for the session. You will have this. Uh, e medical pass promotion that will end in September. Okay, next slide, please. Right, um, touch points. You'll be realizing that we'll be focusing a lot on pricing the property. So I want to drive a message home that all agents during this season, your one thing is to figure out how to price property correctly in preparation for the market to be open. Now, some of us have been asking this question, when is the market going to open for us? Uh, two ways. Number one, the short way is uh, if Rostan become prime minister, he'll open for hours tomorrow. So, so let's hope what happened. But that's, that, 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 in, in the event that did not happen, right? we are still waiting, uh, waiting uh, because um, we have been in very high communication with a lot of um, people. And right now there are a lot of confusion in the uh, ministries as well. So we are still working very hard to communicate with them and be working through with them, right? So we will definitely let you guys know as soon as possible. I know everyone is interested. I don't have an answer right now because I cannot get the answer. We are finding very hard to get confirmation from all parties. So we are working on that uh, right now. So hang on, hang on, hang on, uh, hang on, hang on to that. We will try to get you some answers within the next couple of days if we can. Next slide, please. Right. Okay. Before we go, last thoughts. Uh, maybe we'll start with Lily. What are your last thoughts about culture and equity for everyone? Uh, what will your last thoughts or advice be for our audience here today? Lily, maybe you can go first. Sorry, you can pass to others first. <laughs> okay, so, I'll pass to Naki first. Naki, quick. go ahead. What is your last thoughts? Okay, uh, advice? all right. I think values and culture is really important. It, it makes you who you are as a person. So if you instill the correct value, the right value, you will, I, for me, I think, you will leave a, a good legacy for the people in the future. All right, uh, last thing for everything in order to encompass what is equity to, towards equity. Just imagine this. Uh, I always give this metaphor to, uh, to my kids, actually. Equity is basically fairness, all right? So if you want to be treated fairly, for example, I'm just giving you a metaphor. Treat the bangla, which is, you know, handling the guard post the same as you're treating a VVIP person who is doing a multi-million transaction with you because you will never know you will never know in the future uh, that particular bangla will help you, will help your kids in some incident. You, you will never know. Just be fair to person. Be, I think being equity is really important because what you give, you will get back. And probably not for you, for your family as well. So 
just just be nice and be fair to everyone. I, I think it's really, really important. Some people do uh, miss that or slip that in the back of my mind, especially when you're, you know, when you're being a salesperson or things like that. You always have to, I'm, I'm not saying anyone, but uh, preset judgment towards individual, which is wrong, which is wrong. I think I, I, don't want, I don't want my kids to live based on that legacy. It's all about fairness, like treat people nicely, you'll get the same thing. Right. Wow, that's a good one. That's a very, very good one. Right, Rosal, how about you? What's your last advice? My advice is that, uh, just to share, because in the Quran, it's already stated that God created men uh, with different, different races. And the reason for that is for us to know each other. And the prophet also mentioned that there's no one above anyone else, whether you're an Arab, whether you are whatever race, you are no one, but all are the same towards, uh, towards him, you know, the only one. So the most important thing for us now is to know the one, one thing that you should know. As for me, the one thing that I am focusing on is myself, because if I fail to focus on one thing, which is me, everything else is going uh, to fall apart. So you always have that in mind and always be happy every day. Like whatever things that comes uh, uh, that you have to face, always remember that the problem that you faced five years ago today is nothing. Uh, when you look, at, look back, you know, you can just sometimes you just can just laugh it off. So always remember that whatever, whatever uh, test or, or uh, hardship it's given, destined or given to you, it's not always. Uh, it's not uh, uh, above or, or what you can't handle. It's always you can handle. There's a, always a problem to every solution. All that we need to do is to look for the right solution. So, just be 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 strong and just hold on to whatever that you have now. Thank you, Lily. How about you? What's your last thoughts? Um, I think um, don't be afraid to do more in um. In doing something extra that adds values to others uh, without expecting returns, um, uh, as eventually we will be rewarded when we set our heart right first. Uh, yeah, so mm, that's right. right. Set, your, set your heart right and do what you think is right first before you focus on the reward because the reward is an outcome of what our heart is. The reward is that outcome of what 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 we become right so thank you very much guys uh, how many of you are learning something today from this one of speakers here today if you are please um express your gratitude to them on the chat box that they have been very vulnerable and very open uh in sharing um their story and sh sharing their life and our their business because please please quickly on the chat box express your gratitude to them right so lily uh, naki and rostan thank you so much for joining us this morning i know it's been a very challenging year for all of us but yet um, the positivity and the energy that you all bring to the table really ignites and helps us to see things differently. And we talk about difficult things, which I like. Uh, thank you for having that open conversation with us that we talk about some of these difficult things that we don't talk about enough to help us see how we can be better people in our journey. So thank you so much, guys, uh, for thank doing you, this. Man. Thank you, for, thank you, thank you, Roslan, Naki, and Didi. And for those who are watching, thank you so much for, I hope this has helped you to set the tone for your this week and to think about how can you be better and how can we all be better in what we do um, every day of our life. So thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Take care. See you guys. Thank everyone. Everyone. Thank you, thank you everyone. Bye. Is a blue shoots up through the stony ground. There's no room, no space to win in this town. You're out of luck, and the reason that you have.